everybody and uh, welcome. We are very, very pleased to have you watching this presentation and taking part in the senior college presentation by Brother Rice's counseling department for the class of 2020. Uh, this is the most unique experience and the most unique um, presentation we have ever given. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, my name is Pat Creed. I am the director of counseling here at Brother Rice and I'd like to introduce you at least audioly to our team this year. I'm being joined this year by Miss Leah Brown. Good evening, everybody. I am Miss Brown. If you or your son had Mr. McAlpin last year for, as a counselor, then more than likely I am your new counselor. It is nice to meet you through this very interesting presentation, and I look forward to working with you throughout the year. Thank you, Miss Brown. And we are also being joined this year by Miss Claire Furch. Uh, if you have Mrs. Rund, uh, Mrs. Rund is actually not going to be at Brother Rice this semester. Mrs. Rund gave birth to a beautiful baby girl in August, so she is taking the semester off. And Miss Furch is filling in for uh, Mrs. Rund. Mrs. Rund will be back in January, but let me introduce you to Miss Claire Furch. Hello, everybody. My name is Miss Furch, and I'm very excited to be working with your sons this semester. And finally, if you had Mrs. Antos as a counselor last year, um, more than likely you or your son is on my caseload this year. But if you're not sure, if you just want to confirm, feel free to contact any of us. Our emails and our phone numbers are at the end of the presentation. So feel free to contact us at any time you need to. Uh, let's get started. First things first, everybody. Um, we need to recognize all of us, including us as counselors, need to recognize that in these uncertain times, everything is changing. Um, everything about our lives is different than it was a year ago, and that includes college admissions counseling. This year is a whole new world for all of us in college admissions counseling, from high school counselors to the uh, admissions counselors at the universities. We ask that you please be patient. There are so many new rules, and they will continue to change. Please be patient with this entire process. Be patient with counselors on the college end. Be patient with all of us here at Brother Rice. And be patient with the schools themselves. Everything is changing, and we're going to get through this. We're all going to get through this together. Please make sure you ask as many questions of your counselor here at Brother Rice, of the university, of the counselors that you may meet there. Ask as many questions as possible. We will get through this together. First, we will begin talking about the ACT and admissions testing. As I'm sure you know, due to COVID, this past spring and summer has been a nightmare for students and families with the ACT. We have had students travel as far as Toledo, Ohio, just to take the test. Basically, the ACT was nowhere near prepared for the pandemic and is just now barely catching up. Because of this, many colleges have gone test optional for the 2020-2021 school year. With that being said, Gentlemen, it is your responsibility to know your college's current testing policies. Next, if you have the opportunity to test, you should definitely take that opportunity in order to have another piece of information to reflect upon the student that you are. Because of all of the chaos ensued by the pandemic, for the first time ever, Brother Rice will be offering the ACT at our school. The dates for this are going to be Saturday, October 10th, and Sunday, October 25th. These dates are open to seniors only right now and will eventually open up to juniors on Tuesday, September 8th, so get your registrations in. The registration deadline for both tests is Thursday, September 17th, with late registration deadline being Friday, September 25th. We are an unlisted test center. Because of this, you must enter unique codes to register for each test. The October 10th test code is 251207. The October 25th test code is 251201. All registration still happens on ACT.org. Parents, you should have received an email last week from Mr. Creed with all of this information. If you have any questions, please contact us in the counseling department. There are several test dates in September and October for the ACT. You can find these dates on actstudent.org. 
There are also tests being offered in December of 2020 and February, April, June, and July of 2021. More information can be found on actstudent.org. There are also dates listed here to take this SAT should you wish. More information on the SAT can be found at collegeboard.org. Just to note, colleges will accept both tests, but 95% of Brother Rice students do take the ACT. As with most things happening, Brother Rice will be having our financial aid night virtual this year. Mr. Frank Palmasani, author of Right College, Right Price, and financial aid expert of 35 years, has put together a digital presentation on financial aid and the college process. This video is accessible here. You cannot search for this video on YouTube. You must use this link here. Click the word here for the link. There will be several attachments Frank will reference in the video, which will all be located in the description box of the video on YouTube. Mr. Paul Masani will host a Q&A session for Brother Rice families on Thursday, September 10th, from 7 to 7.30 p.m. Mr. Palmasani's video should be watched before attending his Q&A session. This session will be a live Zoom meeting, which you can access here. Click the word here for the link. Please make sure you have Zoom downloaded on your computer, laptop, or device. If the link does not work for you, here is the Zoom call information. The meeting ID is 829-526-3295 with the passcode being 6 uppercase B 8 uppercase H Q E. Okay everyone, so unfortunately this year we are unable to have our normal very large and very well attended college fair. It has been canceled and it is out of our control that Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling has canceled all in-person college fairs for this fall. So we are hoping to reschedule our fair for spring 2021, but in the meantime, even though we can't do our in-person fair, there are several virtual tours available that we highly recommend that our students attend. So virtual college exploration, we've created a Google Doc for these virtual college experiences that will be continually updated throughout this school year. So including this fall and in the spring. So this information is provided uh, to all of our students and it'll be shared with all of you as well. Uh, this Google Doc is actually linked to the blue words on this slide, which is awesome. We will also be including any college and university who sends us information on virtual open houses or tours through the university and new additions will be highlighted on the Google Doc whenever they are added. So students can visit colleges virtually during the school day and dur like during school hours, uh, but they should contact their counselor beforehand so we can set up a good time and make sure that accommodations are being made for them. We do encourage students to try to schedule these meetings outside of school hours, but if it's inside school hours, we will do what we can to work with our students. So a couple tips for these virtual visits and fairs. You should look at the list of colleges that are attending the virtual fairs beforehand and pick at least five that interest you as a student. It is at least five because you want to give yourself a good variety of schools and think about what kind of college experience you want next year. So things to consider are the cost of the school, the majors that they offer, the size of the school, including the size of the campus and the size of the student body, where the school is, extracurriculars and special services. 
You want to also write down your most important questions in advance so that you do not forget to ask them. We all know that that has happened. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's happened to you guys in the past, so please write down your questions. You also want to take notes, take avid notes about the, the things that you are listening to so you remember the information. Students, before you attend these visits, please, uh, please write down your GPA and your class rank. Lots of colleges will reference their average GPA and the rank and the test score that they use to admit students. So if you have yours in front of you, you will know if you're in the ballpark of their admissions. You want to, you want to also write down the names and emails of any representative whom you watch present. This is very important because this will allow you to be able to follow up with the reps if you have any questions that go unanswered during the presentation or if you have questions later after the presentation ends. These college reps can be your best friends during the admission process because no one knows their admission process better than they do, and it is their job to help you get into their school. Okay, so let's get started on the actual application process. It's a four-step, step-by-step guide. Let's get going on it. Step one, apply. Uh, it's imperative to actually do the application first. That's the most important thing that you can be doing, is doing the application first. Every application that you do, every college that you, should apply, that you apply to, you should start at that school's website. The school's website can tell you exactly how to apply. If you're going to do it through their website, Common App or Coalition App, we'll have more on that in just a minute, or through another means always start at the college's website. It is so important that you complete your own application. Gentlemen, you are going to go to college next year. You need to be filling out these applications yourselves. You should not be having your parents fill out applications. They can help you along the way for sure. Mom and dad, don't shy away from them if they need help. But guys, you need to fill out the applications yourself. If you can't fill out your college applications, you're going to need to make room in your dorm next year for your parents to move in. Because if you can't handle filling out the applications, I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to handle college. So please, mom and dad, make sure they are doing their own applications. We are here to help through every single bit of this process. Gentlemen, mom and dad, if you have questions, ask us at any time. The Common Application is a uh, comprehensive application that can be used to apply to multiple colleges. As you can see here, the application is actually right here. If you can click on this link, the uh, link is active and will take you right to Common App. Sorry, it also apparently takes you forward in the application, um, presentation I should say. So the link is right there if you need it. It's commonapp.org. Over 900 colleges accept the Common App. The list of schools is on their website. Like I said, it is a very extensive uh, application. You're gonna be able to submit grades there, uh, do essays there, answer questions for colleges there, and do all of your demographic information through the Common App. It is extensive, so make sure that you plan accordingly. If you are going to be applying to three or more colleges that are on the Common App, you should use the Common App. Trust, uh, trust me when I tell you, I'm not looking to make more work for you. So if you're only applying to one school that's using the Common App, see if there's another way that you can apply for it. See if they offer an application through their own website. Don't overwork yourselves. Work smart. Work so that you can do all of this in the best way possible. Work efficiently. That's so important in the college application process. Uh, gentlemen, it is long. If you're going to apply through Common App, you should definitely start doing it now. Don't try to do it in one sitting. It is too long. Break it up into small little pieces. Do maybe a half hour each day, but start it now. The co coalition application is very similar to the Common App. Uh, it's also linked right above. The orange link is your link to the Coalition app. Um, different schools are using it, and there's about 140 or more schools that use this application. 
The biggest one that our students use it for is the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The U of I is a part of the Coalition app. It is not on the Common app. Um, again, if you are applying to three or more schools on the Coalition app, use it. Um, definitely don't work, don't overwork yourselves if you don't need to. Uh, it is long, so get started sooner rather than later. Now I want to talk to you about the types of college admissions. Okay, um, These are the different things that you may see that may come up, and if you have questions about them, I definitely want you to ask them. But I'm going to go through them right now. Okay, The first type is regular decision. A regular decision application is the most common type of application that you will see. The deadline is typically around January 1st. Um, students that apply a regular decision, so by January 1st, will typically receive admissions decisions by March. That's usually how we go with this. Uh, that's usually what we look at. With COVID-19, I'm not sure if that's going to change, but typically kids receive them by March. The second type of college admissions is rolling admission. This is the school that will accept applications all year long. You can apply to these schools even up to and including June or July next summer. Um, so these schools accept applications all year long. A great example of this is St. Xavier University. St. Xavier will allow you to apply at any time during the year. Several colleges along with St. Xavier use this type of admission. Um, if you apply this way, you receive your admission decision typically about six weeks after submitting your application. Now, this is a big one. We're going to talk about two more types of college admissions, and it's early decision and early action. There is a big difference between early decision and early action. I'm going to go over early decision one first. Excuse me. You can only use this type of application for one college. Early decision can only be used for one college. It must be your absolute dream school if it is offered. So if this is a school that you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to go here, but I'll apply anyway, you should not apply early decision to this school. If you are, I've wanted to go to this school for my entire life, I'm looking forward to it, and I really, really, really want to be a part of this campus community, and they offer early decision, consider early decision for that school. Early decision applications are contractually binding. That is huge. That is the difference between early decision and early action. Early decision applications are contractually binding. That means if you are accepted on an early decision app, you must attend that college and forfeit all other applications and all other scholarships to any other school. So early decision is a very, very, very big deal. Uh, the deadline is typically November 1st or November 15th, um, and you usually receive early decision uh, admission decisions by late December. Usually around the new year, kids find out if they applied early decision, if they've been accepted, uh, denied, or put on a wait list. There is no easy way to back out of early decision. Please know that. Please recognize that there is no easy way to back out of early decision. If you are doing this, talk to your counselor immediately um, because it's something that everybody has to be involved in. The great thing about an early decision application is you're not going to accidentally do it. That's not possible. There's too many things to do. Counselors have to sign off on it. Parents have to sign off on it and students need to know what they're picking. You won't accidentally pick an early decision. It's a big deal, Common App makes it a big deal, Coalition makes it a big deal, and the schools make it a big deal too. So you can't accidentally do early decision. Um, now you may be asking, boy, that's a lot of things we need to consider for early decision, uh, and you're totally right. Um, however, the one thing I'm gonna tell you is that early decision is a really good option for those elite schools that may be offering the early decision. Um, for example, a couple of years ago, Northwestern actually admitted 50% of their entire freshman class 
from their early decision applications. So that means half of freshmen made the commitment that if we get in, we're going there. So that's a huge number, that's an amazing number, but that's the type of place that if you are really interested, you would wanna consider early decision. Um, so these are usually elite schools, higher schools, higher end schools that uh, have this sort of thing, these early decision deadlines. Again, early decision, if you're considering it, please talk to your counselor immediately. I talked about early action a minute ago, and that's the next type of college admission, early action, okay? Early action is not early decision. Early action gives you the benefit of receiving an early admission, but it is non-binding. You can apply to several schools under the early action application if they are available. We highly, highly recommend that uh, you do this if it's an option for you. Uh, the deadline is typically November 1st or November 15th, um, but we have seen some in the past that do do a December 1st deadline uh, for early action. So please make sure that you see that. You may see some uh, schools call it priority admissions. Early action and priority is the same thing. That's the non-binding form of an early application. Some schools may have adjusted due dates or admissions decision dates. Uh, for example, the U of I uh, will have one decision date no matter when you apply. If you apply early action at the U of I by November 1st, you will be told the same time that the kids who apply by January 1st will be. That's in February, okay? Um, you are still very, very advantageous to indeed make that uh, make that call, make that early action application when it comes to a school like that. Even though you won't find out until November, your application is still being read in November, December. Excuse me, I said February earlier. I meant uh, I meant to say February. Sorry. So yes, just make sure that you know your dates. So steps two, three, and four are very important, but it all has to be done after you submit your application. So after you literally click submit application, that's when these next steps can be done. They can be done concurrently with one another, but we can't be sending transcripts for you guys uh, until your application is submitted, okay? So make sure you get the application submitted. Steps two through four can be done in any order and they can be done concurrently, but they can't be done until uh, we submit the application. You submit the application, I should say. Basically, colleges need to have your name and your application on file so that they can accept uh, extraneous things like transcripts, letters of recommendation, uh, test scores, they need to have your application on file first. Otherwise, your stuff can be put in misplaced, it can be misfiled, it could be all over the place. So it's the easiest thing that you can do to make sure that you submit and then get all the other stuff done. So step two, transcripts. So requesting transcripts is a little bit different this year than in years previous, okay? So uh, the counseling office will send your transcripts after you've applied to your college, like I said earlier. Transcript release forms are always available in the counseling office. They are always on bright yellow pieces of paper and they are always in a metal bin right under Mrs. Jance's window as soon as you walk into our lobby. You can come in at any point and take as many of those as you want but that's the important thing. It's that yellow transcript release form right under Mrs. Jant's window. If you are a full-time e-learner or if you will be out of school uh, for a number of days, uh, we have also made that available online to you. You can click that orange uh, link that says online um, right in that second bullet point there and it will take you straight there where you can um, print that off. The transcript release form is a pretty uh, self-explanatory form. You need to fill out the top part and indicate what type of transcript that you need, if it's an official transcript, an unofficial transcript, whatever it may be. 
in the middle you're going to put what college it's going to or if it needs to be uploaded via common app coalition app etc uh, down at the bottom you're going to see that uh, signatures are necessary and please make sure that parents and students sign that uh, and then the bottom part the very bottom part of that is for in office use so transcripts you need one sheet one transcript release form per college unless you are applying through common app or coalition app so if you're applying to colleges off off of their website so if you apply to st xavier off of st xavier's website we have to send that to st xavier if you apply to another school through their website we have to send that to that other school so that needs two different uh, transcript release forms however if you're applying through the common app or Co coalition app we're actually not sending it to the school we're uploading it straight to that uh, that website so common app or coalition app so even if you apply to 10 schools on common app you still only need one transcript release form for uh, common app let's go back to our example if you apply through st xavier's website uh, if you apply to isu through their website and you apply to four schools on common app even though you are applying to six schools you need three transcript release forms one for zabs one for isu one for common app a parent signature is required if the student is under 18. if we are going to be dealing with anything with military so marines uh, naval academy army whatever it may be and they need your transcripts even guys even if you're over 18 we're going to ask for a parent signature on that just so mom and dad can be aware of what's happening there all transcript requests must be requested with the transcript release form do not email us and say can you send my transcript to common app no you have to fill out a form we need to have written permission of your parents allowing your transcript to go out transcript release forms are free this year because of the pandemic we are currently using up our last stock of transcript release forms there's probably 80 left that say two dollars per sheet ignore it everything is free this year due to the pandemic these transcript release forms can be turned into anyone in our counseling office including mrs jantz you do not need to wait for your counselor to turn these forms in your counselor may be busy you can turn them into mrs jantz or any of the other counselors w gentlemen we need up to 10 business days to process transcripts please do not walk in the day an application is due and say we have to send your transcript it won't get done you need to give us time you need to make sure that you are planning your schedules correctly so that we can get these things off for you give us 10 business days to process transcripts we can also use this transcript release form to request unofficial transcripts unofficial transcripts cannot be submitted to any college university or scholarship program on your behalf the un the unofficial transcript is mostly going to be used in case your college and in case your application is asking for self-reported grades or self-reported student assessments um, if you have that you're going to need a uh, unofficial transcript we're happy to give that to you please indicate that on your form step three is test scores as a reminder yes so many colleges have gone test optional this year um, just so you know and as a reminder test optional means that you do not have to submit test scores as part of your application that's going to be asked on your application if you would like to submit test scores or not if you choose no they're not expecting anything from you that's totally okay they will review your application without the test scores however if you have test scores and they reflect the type of student that you are you should absolutely submit them so if you are the type of student who has a 4.5 gpa 
and you took the ACT and you got a 34 on it, send it. Definitely send it. Those The colleges want to know that you have done so well on those tests. So if you have them and they reflect the uh, type of student that you are, submit them. And don't forget, there are still some schools that are requiring test scores. So at the bottom of this page, we've provided you a link of the colleges currently that are test optional. So sending your test scores. Brother Rice does not send test scores. Again, we will not send your test scores. Gentlemen, it is your responsibility to do that, okay? For the ACT, log on to your ACT account um, at that website there. It's gonna be $13 per test score heading to appropriate colleges. For SAT, collegeboard.org, $12 per test score. The big one on this slide is for our gentlemen who have taken AP exams. You're gonna to have to go through your College Board account and those are gonna be $15 per test score to send off. For gentlemen who will be using AP tests and AP test scores, only the college you will be attending should receive these scores. Do not send AP scores to places that you are applying. You should only be sending AP scores to the college you are committing to go to. So most of these scores will be sent next summer after you've received all of your AP scores for, uh, for your time at Brother Rice. The final step of the four-step process is your letters of recommendation. First thing is first, check to make sure if the college requires a letter of recommendation. If they don't require one, you don't need to submit them. Many colleges don't require them and don't even want them. Uh, for example, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, if we submit a letter of recommendation on your behalf, they throw it right in the garbage. They don't look at it, they won't read it, they're not interested, they just want your transcript and your self-reported grades. That's all that school is looking for. So if your college doesn't require a letter, don't submit one. If they do allow letters, it's recommended that you get at least one letter of recommendation. That's because these colleges want to hear from adults who are around you, like counselors, teachers, coaches, employers, um, church staff, other community organizing staff. They want to hear from adults that are around you that can speak to the type of student you are, type of person you are. So if they allow letters, we recommend that you get at least one. Some places will require letters of recommendation. That's by school. Again, make sure you know your school's rules when it comes to letters of recommendation. The biggest thing that we need you guys to do right now is to make sure that you fill out your information for recommendation letters on Naviance. It's extensive, but it gives us, when I say us, everyone at Brother Rice has the ability to see what you write. So your teachers, your counselors, the principal, the assistant principal, uh, coaches who are involved with Brother Rice, anyone who may be writing a letter of recommendation for you has a full view and has access to this information on Naviance. And it gives you a full view of who you are in and out of school. The reason why we want you to fill this out, guys, is because there may be some information that we don't know about you. One of the things that I see every single year are students that are going for their Eagle Scout badge, that are going for that great honor of becoming an Eagle Scout. Well, for the most part, kids don't reveal that they're in Boy Scouts to counselors. I don't know why, they just don't tell us. It's not until we start reading the information for recommendation letters that we find out that they are indeed going for their Eagle Scout and doing an enormous community project that they're in charge of uh, while they do this. That's something that we're definitely gonna talk about and we usually have that revealed through information for recommendation letters. So please, if you're planning on getting a recommendation letter, fill this out on Naviance. The directions are here for how you find that. You will need to ask your recommender in person if they can write you a letter. Do not just email them. Do not just assume that they'll do it. Make sure you ask. It takes three seconds out of your day to walk up and say, hi, Mr. Creed, I'm just wondering, would you be willing to write a letter of recommendation for me for college? 
yes, sir, absolutely, I'd be happy to do that for you. Um, I think it's very presumptive of students when they just put my name down and say, uh, Pat, so-and-so has asked for your letter of recommendation. Just ask, guys. It doesn't take long. Please just ask. It's the polite thing to do. Um, you can absolutely follow up with anybody with reminders or with emails. I'm probably going to write 50 letters of recommendation this year, guys. Do not feel bad and don't feel like I'm going to get upset if you ask me, hi, um, do you remember that you're writing me a letter of recommendation? Can I ask where you are on it? Okay. I will have a list and I will let you know where you're at on that list. That's just me. Other teachers will do it the same way as well. Okay. Um, but please don't feel bad if you're going to ask, hey, have you gotten to my letter yet? It's totally okay if you ask any of us that. In big highlighted letters at the bottom, you need to give your recommender at least four weeks to get your letter, letter finished. Okay, again, we are going to be bombarded with letters. There are certain teachers in the school that will write 15, 20, 25 letters. Uh, counselors usually write about 50 a year. So give us time to get that done, okay? Ask us well enough in advance. If you notice this, um, if you have a November 1st deadline, guys, you're gonna wanna ask for letters of recommendation at the beginning of October. Make sure you get that done, okay? This next screen is really just a process screen. I'm not gonna go through every word of this, okay? This screen is the main reason why we have included this presentation as a PDF in this email that we sent, in the email that we sent you guys, okay? Because we want you to be able to go back and look at this stuff and remember how to do this, okay? So this is something I'm not gonna go over by um, word for word. Uh, just please, if you have questions, ask your counselor. If you have any trouble with any of this, come and ask your counselor. We want to help you. We are here to help you. That is what our plan is, is to do everything we can to help you out, okay? So that's the big one here. Take a look at this a little bit later on the PDF that we sent you and ask questions, please. To review, our final review here. Step one, apply to your college. That means hitting submit on the application. That's step one. Step two, three, and four can all be done in any order or done concurrently. Just make sure that step one is finished. Uh, you can request your, re excuse me, request your transcript. Three is send your test scores. Four is get your letters of recommendation, okay? Depending on the college, everything must be in by the deadline. So if your college requires an application, a transcript and a letter of recommendation, they all must be in by the college deadline. If they require all four of these things, they must be in by the college's deadline. If your deadline is November 1st, they will not accept it on November 2nd. It will not be considered an early application. It will go into the regular application pool. So it's super important that they have all of this information by, your de by the deadline. So please don't be asking for transcripts the night before an application's due. Don't ask for letters of recommendation a week before the, the application's due. Make sure you plan and make sure you stay organized to get all of this stuff done. It's a lot, but you can do it. Stay organized, know your dates, and everything will be just fine. Now let's talk about everyone's role to play in your college process. First and foremost is you, the student's role. You are ultimately responsible for almost everything. Let's break that down a little bit. You need to be the one filling out your applications, writing your essays, and providing information for your recommendation letters. You are responsible for knowing the dates that everything is due. Write them down somewhere where that you will remember them. You are responsible for turning in forms such as transcript forms, sending your test scores, and following up on your recommendation letters. You are responsible for asking any questions you may have. And lastly, you are responsible for requesting to see your counselor if there are any additional questions. Next is your counselor's role. 
We will be here to present the application process to you, which is what we are doing right now. Gentlemen and parents, feel free to come to us with any questions you may have. We are here to meet with all students as needed, as well as parents. If you need to meet with one of us, feel free to set up a Zoom call or a phone call and we will be happy to assist you. We will be writing your letters of recommendation. We will be here to speak to any college representatives on your behalf. We are your advocates. We are here for anything that may ease the college process on you. Last, we have the parents role. Parents, you will be responsible for filling out the FAFSA application and you can be available to help assist your son to send out his test scores. If you have any questions, if you are unsure, if there's anything you do not understand, please, please, please do not hesitate to contact your counselor. Okay, everyone, the next part of our presentation is going to be all about paying for college. So before I get into the information, I do want to please refer you back to the slides regarding our virtual financial aid night. Please review those slides, watch that YouTube video, and attend the virtual financial aid night next Thursday, September 10th from 7 to 7.30 p.m. The information that I'm about to share with you guys overlaps with the information that will be presented during that YouTube video and the questions answered next week. But Mr. Pal Palmasani, excuse me, goes into so much detail about this process that I highly, highly recommend listening to him as well as the next few slides. So before getting into how to pay for college, it's important to know how much college is going to cost our students. So there are two kind of prices that, that colleges go by. The first one is called the sticker price, which is the one that is most often advertised when colleges are promoting themselves. And then there's the net price of a school, which is actually the price after subtracting things like scholarships and grants and loans. So each university is federally mandated to have a net price calculator on their website. So the best way to find these is to simply Google, insert college name here, for example, Northwestern net price calculator, and it should be the first few links uh, that'll get you there. So this will give you an estimate of how much it will actually cost to attend each college on your student's list versus the sticker price that is advertised, which is higher every single time than the net price. So after you figure out how much the college will actually cost, how do you actually pay for it? The first step is to, going to be to fill out FAFSA. FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. The FAFSA application is linked in this presentation. It's the orange part of this slide, and it opens October 1st. It is very important to get this done as soon as possible when it opens October 1st. We at, at Brother Rice always suggest getting it done sometime in October, the sooner the better. The way that the federal government offers money to students is that every year they have this big bucket that they fill with money. And as soon as it all gets used up by students across the country, the money is gone. It does not refill. So that's why it is so important to get this done early. All families should complete FAFSA regardless of your family income. Many schools will not award any, any financial aid without the FAFSA being done. So please, please finish this as soon as possible when it opens. Parents, this is your biggest role in the college application process. This is very important to do. So the next part, besides FAFSA, besides federal aid, is going to be scholarships. There are many different types of scholarships that your students will be applying to and finding. And the first type is academic scholarships. These are scholarships that are offered through the different universities, and they're based on the student's application. 
these might be changing. We do not know. We're learning as you guys learn because a lot of these academic scholarships in the past have been based on a student's GPA and test scores. But now that many schools are going test optional, they may be changing the regulations. So as soon as we know any updates, we will update our students as well. So the next way to search for scholarships is going to be through scholarship search engines. So we have listed four really great scholarship search engines and on each website, students will create profiles that include a bunch of different information on them, like a crazy amount of information, and then they are actually matched with specific scholarships that they can then apply for. So this is a great way to find a whole bunch of scholarships uh, if this is the route that you guys are taking. So the next way to find scholarships is to go to each university's individual website. They will have major specific scholarships. Many of these schools will have these major specific scholarships um, that are potentially based on a student's merit, but also potentially based on a number of other factors. So check often because these will be updated as well. The last way uh, to search for scholarships is actually Brother Rice and Naviance, which is our college search engine tool. We at Brother Rice, uh, we get told of any local and national scholarships, and we will actually post any of these local or national scholarships that we are told about. Uh, and all of these scholarships are going to be posted to Naviance, so these should be checked often as well. So the scholarships that we post, a lot of them do come in second semester after a lot of the application process has been finished. This slide is a slide for the student athletes who are currently watching and the parents of student athletes who are currently watching. Um, it is important that if you plan to play sports in college, that you are registered with the appropriate uh, athletic organization. Um, the NCAA, you will need to register through eligibilitycenter.org. The orange link is right there. Um, through NAIA, you will need to go through playnaia.org. Again, the link is highlighted for you there. There is always an application and a fee for either of these two, two organizations, uh, the NCAA and the NAIA. Um, please don't forget that your academic and ACT score standards must be fulfilled. Your counselor is here and will help you determine eligibility. As of now, the ACT is still required to be able to play uh, NCAA. So if you are a student athlete, you're gonna wanna get registered for uh, an ACT or an SAT. And don't forget that we're offering that at Brother Rice in October two times. Um, so yeah, so uh, each of these organizations has a different level of what their minimum is for GPA or a corresponding test store, test score, excuse me. Um, NCAA Division I uh, sports is the highest, so we're, we're listing that here. Um, at a minimum, to play in the NCAA Division I, a student must have a 2.3 GPA and a corresponding test score. They also must complete 16 core credit classes. An important note for me to say here is it's not just a GPA of 2.3, it is a core GPA of 2.3, core GPA of 2.3. That means your math, science, English, um, social studies, foreign language, those types of classes. They would not include any electives or theologies that you would have taken here at Brother Rice. If you need help determining your uh, athletic eligibility, please stop in to see your counselor. We're happy to help. Students who register through these two organizations must fill out a transcript release form and turn it into the counseling office as we will upload that for you, but we just have to be aware that you need to do it. It's just like our, uh, our standards and practices for a regular transcript. Still has to go through the transcript release form. Um, please be aware of your test score, core GPA, and your core courses, guys. If you're not sure, come and see us in the counseling office. 
We just want to thank you for sticking with this uh, presentation. Um, we know it's a totally different thing than what we're used to. Trust me when I tell you we would rather have you here in person than be doing this through uh, this electronic means. Um, but as we all know, we have to do what we have to do in these uncertain times. Normally, this is a place we would ask for questions. So I encourage you all, reach out. Please, please, please email or call your son's counselor with any questions you may have. Guys, step into the office. Stop in whenever you need to and talk to us. Talk to your counselor. Um, we are here to help you. We want to help you. This is one of the best and most rewarding parts of our job is getting through and getting to do college counseling with you guys. So as you'll see here, we I have a link. The orange link is to all of our emails. If you need to email us, uh, including Mrs. Jantz, our administrative assistant, and all of our numbers are on there um, with the extensions. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Don't hesitate to ask questions. If there's anything that we can do, we want to help. This is a stressful time, but this is a time where we can help you do a lot of different things. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions at any time. We appreciate your attention. We appreciate uh, you. And thank you so very much for everything that you've done. Take care.